everyone and welcome to Tween Tuesdays. My name is Carrie. I'm the Tween Librarian at the Arlington Heights Memorial Library. Here's how it works. Every week we will post a list of supplies or ingredients on our programs page. You gather all that stuff together and then meet me here every Tuesday and we will do some fun projects together. So I'm sure you got this week's list of supplies. So I hope you have, have it all ready. Um, Oops. Okay, that didn't work quite as I planned, but hope you've got your, your Windex and your mops and everything ready to go, and you're ready to buckle down for this two-hour webinar on cleaning your room. Just kidding, April Fools. You probably figured that out already. You guys are too smart anyways. So as you know, tomorrow is April 1st, and it's a day we celebrate by playing tricks on our family or our friends. And have you ever wondered why April 1st? So there's lots of different theories on why we celebrate on that exact date. Scholars have thought that maybe it has something to do with um, the original New Year's Day in France was on April 1st, and then King Charles IX decided to change it to January 1st, and lots of people still celebrated the old date. So all of those people were called April Fools. Still, there's lots of other theories. It could have to do with the crazy spring weather and how um, when there's the arrival of spring, it kind of tricks us with nature's unpredictability. There's also an ancient Roman festival called Hilaria that's celebrated in the spring, so it could have something to do with that as well. So it is a holiday that's celebrated primarily in North America and in Europe. So in France, kids tape paper fish to each other's backs and then without the other person knowing, and the person who has the fish on their back is called an April fish. In Scotland, they celebrate Gawky Day, and a gawk is a bird, um, a cuckoo bird, that symbolizes foolishness, and the day after Gawky Day, they put kick me signs on each other's backs. So a pretty epic prank happened back in 1957. The BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation, had a news show and they showed people harvesting spaghetti from trees in Switzerland. It was so convincing and because they're a trusted news source, people started calling in and wanted to get their hands on spaghetti trees. There is a link below to a wakelet that I made so you can access this original footage from the 1957 news broadcast. It's, it's pretty awesome. So remember, when you are pulling pranks tomorrow, be careful that your tricks don't get out of hand. It's not in the spirit of the holiday to hurt people or, or be mean. So we are going to make some pranks together. So the first supplies that you're going to want to grab are a square of teepee and a sharpie and then some scratch paper because we don't want our sharpie to bleed through. So what you're gonna do is write a funny message and place that in the toilet. And because it's in Sharpie, the ink won't run. And then the next person who uses the toilet is gonna get a funny little message and probably laugh about it. So that one's super easy and simple. Um, probably don't wanna do too many because toilet paper is a hot commodity. So maybe just one or two squares. Um, all right, so the next one you are gonna need your glue stick and some markers and some paper. And we are gonna start by folding our paper hamburger style, just like you're making a regular greeting card. And then you can go ahead and crease it really well. And you can write a nice, positive, encouraging message. We all need that right now, so you can give it to someone in your family. Um, so, can decorate it however you want um, but now the most important part the ma part that makes it an April Fool's trick is we are going to seal it shut so they can't actually open it so go ahead and open up your card and we're gonna add glue around all of the edges and make sure get it everywhere so it seals nice and tightly once you've got all your glue on, you're going to close it back up and press all the way around. And then when it dries and you go to give it to them, they will not 
be able to open it. So you can work on that even more and decorate it, make it look really nice um, to give to a family member. All right, next we are going to need a Sharpie and then paper and scratch paper again so the Sharpie doesn't bleed through. And what we are going to be doing is just drawing a bug. I think the bigger the better. And once you are finished drawing your bug, you are going to cut it out and then tape it to the inside of a lampshade and then an unsuspecting family member who turns on the lampshade is going to find this gigantic and gross looking bug inside. So go ahead and cut yours out and I'll show you the one that I already finished. Here he is. He looks pretty scary. All right. So that one's pretty, pretty easy. You can make your bug look however you want. Um, all right. Next, we are going to need a banana. I'm going to grab a paper towel because it gets a little bit messy. And then a sewing needle. So what we are doing, we're actually going to be pre-slicing the banana so that you can give this banana to someone and when they open it, it's going to already be sliced. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to be poking a hole and kind of wiggling around our needle. So I got started already. As you can see, it's starting to get brown. So make sure when you hand it to someone, hand it to them this way so they don't see. So you're going to find a ridge on the back of the banana and then you're going to poke a hole in. So I'm going to, I already did these ones, but I'm going to do it up here with your needle. You want to make sure you don't go all the way through to the other side, just on the inside, and then you're going to wiggle it all the way around. And I forgot to say this before, but make sure you use a clean needle, like wash it off a little bit so that someone can still eat this banana. It's still edible. And I want to kind of go all over. And moment of truth. Let's see if my banana worked. Mostly. There it is. Pre-sliced. All right. So that one's kind of like almost like a magic trick that you can do for your, your family at your house. Okay. I'm going to get rid of my banana. And next we are going to be making broccoli pots. Yum. All right, so you are going to need a piece of broccoli and then a skewer of some sort. So maybe you have a toothpick or a skewer or a lollipop stick or whatever, just some kind of something that will fit into the broccoli. So I, I pierced mine, got it ready, and it's on its little stick. Then you're going to need a oops, some tissue paper, and you can kind of make the size of your square based on the size of your broccoli. Like this one was itty bitty, so that was about a four inch square. This one's a little bigger, so I did a six inch square. And if you have it, um, wax paper or parchment paper would be great because then it kind of hides the shape even better. So once you've pierced your broccoli, you can kind of set it up in the middle of your wax paper and tissue paper squares. You're going to take the corners and kind of bring them all together in the center and wrap wrap it all the way around and kind of twist them at the base so it looks kind of like a lollipop. I'm going to use just a little piece of tape to secure the tissue paper and then we can add a ribbon to make it look extra tempting to whoever gets this delicious broccoli pop. All right. So I've got it secured. I'm going to add a little ribbon. Totally optional. If you don't have it, it won't ruin the prank. If you want to make it look extra fancy, you can curl the ribbon. You just slide your scissor on the not shiny side of the ribbon and pull. It's a good life skill for future wrapping presents and pranks like this. All right. There is a delicious and cute broccoli pop for someone to have. And next, another treat. We are going to be making 
sponge cake. Does it look delicious? It's actually a sponge. Don't want to eat that. All right, so as you might have guessed, for this one you're going to need a sponge and some scissors, sprinkles if you have them, a knife for your frosting, and probably a plate to put your cake, your sponge cake on. I'm actually out of frosting, so I'm just going to talk about the steps I would do. Um, but first, we will cut our sponge in half. And depending on, so I kind of have like the curvy shape, so I might trim that off so it's just a regular square. Or you could, yeah, it's probably the best thing to do. Um, and I would take a little piece of frosting and dab it right on the center of the plate so your sponge sticks and then dab a little bit more frosting in between. And then you're going to cover both pieces really well and really thick in frosting and then add some sprinkles for decoration. And then hand that to one of your family members and see what happens. So thank you so much for coming to Tween Tuesdays. I hope you have fun tomorrow pranking your family. But be careful and remember um, to not let things get out of hand. It's not in the spirit of the holiday to be mean or hurt anyone. So keep it light, keep it fun. And if you do some of these pranks, be sure to take a picture and then tag us at AHML. We'd love to see it. Um, and then I will see you next Tuesday for microwave mug cakes. See you then.